more than 300 different uh, reactions in the body. And it's the precursor for biomolecules as important as creatine, phosphatidylcholine, sarcosine, and also is the important or is the precursor for um, a process in the body that is called uh, methylation of DNA, which it's a huge in the in the role of um, regulating the expression of uh, the gene expressions. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Christian Munoz, a PhD student at the University of Guelph. So Christian, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about yourself? Absolutely. First of all, thank you so much for the invitation, Clayton, today. Um, my name is Christian Munoz. I'm originally from Colombia. I did my... Um, bachelor's degree in, in animal science in Bogota, the capital city. I went to Illinois, University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign uh, to, to do my master's in uh, animal science under uh, Dr. Hans Stein supervision. And then I came to Canada to do my PhD in uh, animal nutrition, working now with uh, Dr. Lee and Huber and specifically in uh, protein metabolism and currently uh, focusing in methionine. Gotcha. So, yeah, I wanted to ask you about some of that research you've been doing with methionine, um, particularly on how you've done some work on the methionine requirements for protein and non-protein uses of gestating first parity sows. So just to start us off, could you explain what the difference between protein and non-protein uses are and why this line of research is important? Absolutely. Actually, that was uh, the main reason that made me come to or to ask for the opportunity uh, with Dr. Huber. When she introduces to me this topic, uh, this concept of uh, the use of an amino acid for protein and non-protein is basically because every time that we talk about the requirements specifically for amino acids, we focus on the approaches that have been developed to look at the best growth performance. We always base our, our assumption in which one makes it heavier or grow faster. But we forget that amino acids are being used for more than protein synthesis. We also need protein for a wide variety of biomolecules, which is the non-protein components. And methionine in this case plays an important, a huge role because it's the, methyl, it's the precursor of the ma major methyl donor, which is um, S-adenosylmethionine. I don't know if, you, uh, if you're quite related to that, but uh, the S-adenosylmethionine interferes in more than 300 different uh, reactions in the body. And it's the precursor for biomolecules as important as creatine, phosphatidylcholine, sarcosine, and also is the important or is the precursor for um, a process in the body that is called uh, methylation of DNA, which it's a huge in the in the role of um, regulating the expression of uh, the gene expression. Sorry. So then, when looking at this study, what were some of the hypothesized outcomes? So what what we originally thought it's. Um, that we, when we try to elucidate which is the, the requirement for methionine, we also want to not only produce the, the highest uh, nitrogen retention, but also uh, don't restrict the synthesis of these biomolecules. So the best outcome of what we were expecting is uh, to find a breakpoint where both non-protein and protein uh, uses are in the maximum expression. So when you separate it out between the protein and non-protein uses, do you think that the current requirements are then a little bit lacking because they're not considering those non-protein uses, such as DNA methylation, like you said earlier? Or do you think it's just not defined properly, properly about which one is for protein uses and which one is for non-protein uses? It's an um, interesting question. The... Uh... The originally design was because the recommendation that we have currently, at least in the NR NRC, 
It's uh, based on experiments that were performed like 50 to 70 years ago, right? They had been updated with prediction equations, but still the, the production, the, the swine production was completely different as it is now. Um, so we originally want, wanted to uh, update those numbers, but in this case, including that uh, non-protein uses. Uh, the main idea was to develop a recommendation and inclusion where, where we can find the optimum for both um, purposes. But later on, what we have, uh, what we found uh, in, the, in this experiment was that the recommendation, the, the um, optimum points are not necessarily the same for nitrogen retention or, or protein synthesis and for the synthesis of the other biomolecules. At this point, some of these biomolecules might start increasing concentration and not reaching plateau or the optimum. I don't know if it's it's clear the, the answer. Gotcha. Yeah, I think you and several other people are waiting on that 2012 NRC to be updated. I remember doing my master's in like 2018, 2019, and we were thinking that it was going to be updated here in the next few years. So it's taken a little bit longer than we thought. But on the bright side, maybe when it does come out, your name might be mentioned with some of this research you're doing. So uh, we'll just have to wait and see, but we'll we'll all be looking forward to that. But so I have one more question for you, and this is kind of a little bit of a two part question. But what would you say are some of the um, key milestones within your line of research through, for your PhD? And what are some of the, or not, it's almost another way of phrasing it, but what are some of the the next steps for your team along the way for your research? Honestly, I I really like the way that uh, Dr. Huber articulate this. PhD program because it's 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 quite complete. Our first step was to to compare the the, the um, let's say the um, the current recommendations versus what we found with a different genetics and also including the non-protein uses of the methionine. But then the second step, which is was a collaboration that we did with the South Dakota State University and Dr. Um, Crystal Lebec. We, we run a trial to look at the, um, what would be the, the impact of this different, uh, inclusion of methionine or sulfur amino acid was in this, in, in this, uh, case on the, the performance, the, the, the performance, the growth performance, and also the production of this, um, of the synthesis of these molecules, uh, in the offspring. So this is like, what happens for the sow specifically and what would be the impact for the, for the offspring. And then, so the, the third step is to describe what is the flux or what is the, the fate. We call it the fate of the methionine once it's in the body. So we design a third experiment using isotopes this time to Using labeled methionine, we can see in a proportion how much of this dietary methionine goes to protein synthesis, how much goes to a part of the, the pathway that is called transmethylation, and which one goes through transsulfuration. This is the other third or the other part of this uh, metabolism of methionine. In each of these pathways, a different molecule is synthesized, like, for example, taurine. Uh, the, the oral sulfur amino acid cysteine or glutathione, as you might recall, is the main antioxidant in the body. So that, that this third step will describe and will show us in proportion how much is this in a day. We did a constant infusion, uh, for that experiment and it will, it's still in, in, in the lab step, but it will tell us um, exactly how much goes to each part of the pathway. Um, in the future, I, cause the, the, my, my, that would be all my participation in this, in this project. But later on, uh, the idea is to quantify the protein, uh, rate of synthesis 
using also these techniques, but in tissue, because way more specific uh, to describe a, or give a better picture. So that would that would be information that we can include in our prediction equations to to make a, a better estimation or to create better models when we are fitting ourselves in the industry. When it comes to raising healthy animals, you need more than the right solutions. You need the right partner who brings decades of industry expertise and a global team to put that knowledge to work for the advancement of your operation. At Fibro Animal Health Corporation, we are proud to work with you as your trusted partner. Awesome. Well, thank you for coming on the show. And I'll definitely be looking for some of that research to be published. And maybe when it is published and out, you'll be able to come back on and summarize it all up for us again. But like, yes, like I said, thank you for coming on the show and hope you have a great day. Thank you so much for your time. And thanks for the invitation again. I was pretty excited for receiving the invitation. Um, thanks for having me and have a great day. Yep. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swan Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swannutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.